What's up everybody, it's Tamra Catrice. I just wanted to make a video to kind of talk about, uh, I guess set a basis of my whole IVF journey. So I decided to go public with my journey. Just, it was not an easy decision. I, I was very apprehensive, but I just felt like God was telling me like, share this story and that it was gonna help somebody. So, if I can help somebody with my story, then I'm all for it. I'm usually a really private person. I don't like people in my business. I don't really tell a lot of people all the stuff that I got going on. So, it was not easy, but I've been getting so many messages, so much support, so much love from people, and I really appreciate it. I really do. And um, a lot of people have been telling me that they've been inspired or encouraged. So, you know, when it comes to womanhood and being a mother and babies and all that stuff like it's a sensitive subject and we don't really talk about when something gets in the way of a woman becoming a mother because it's just assumed that you know it's gonna happen easily naturally so um sometimes we don't find out till later that it's not gonna be that easy um in my case we didn't really we didn't start trying to have a baby until about maybe three years ago and I didn't stop taking birth control until about three years ago. So um, I never, you know, would have assumed that anything would be difficult. And after about maybe eight months, you know, I went to the doctor and I was like, hey, you know, we've been trying like, and nothing's been happening. And they're like, you know, don't worry about it. You've been on the pill for a long time. You gotta wait for the pill to get out your system and all that. You know, sometimes it takes this long. And if it's been a year, after a year, if you're still having trouble, then come back. And I was like, something about that just didn't sit right with me. So I'm like, I mean, I've been trying now. Like, it's not working. And I started doing some research of my own and I started looking up the symptoms of PCOS which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I had a lot of the symptoms. Um, some people have more drastic symptoms. Uh, I won't say more drastic, but more visibly noticeable symptoms. And I don't really have any of those, but um, when it starts talking about like how your cycle operates and um, missing cycles and um, it's a hormonal imbalance. So like mood swings, tiredness, um, some people have um, really bad acne. It's, there's a lot of different symptoms. Some people have hair growth. Um, some people have hair thinning. So I was just, you know, reading up on that. And when I realized, um, and this is, might be a little TMI. This is probably something only the girls want to watch. But, <laughs> but when I realized I started, ha I had some of those symptoms. I was like, you know, this this might be explain something. And with PCOS, it's not impossible to get pregnant. It just makes it more difficult because some people don't ovulate and all of that. So I went back to my doctor and I was like, hey, and I'm in the military. So I was stationed in DC at the time. And the bad thing about being in the military when you have doctors, like they change all the time. So it's not like you can really build a rapport with one doctor. So the lady had an attitude. I was like, hey, I want to get tested for PCOS. Like I have some of these symptoms. I want you to check it out. And she was like, oh, you can't be on Google looking at stuff, thinking, you know, you're going to freak yourself out. And I was like, no, I legit have some of these symptoms. Like, can you just do the blood work or whatever you got to do? And she did not want to do it, but she did it just to shut me up. And like two days later, she called me and she was like, well, you're right. It does seem, um, whatever your blood levels are, that they kind of could coincide with that. So she sent me a referral to a, um, I think it was a reproductive endocrinologist or something like that, I don't know. But I had to go to Walter Reed, went there, they did their test. They do all the um, like internal ultrasounds and stuff so, that, so they can look at everything. And they say, yep, you got textbook polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is basically when your ovaries kind of develop a whole bunch of, um, I don't know what to call them, a whole bunch of different um, 
it looks like a bunch of eggs like instead of having a few that are like all the way developed it'll have like a whole bunch of them and some of them may be developed and some of them may not be so it just makes it more difficult for there to be a dominant egg which will allow for ovulation every month i don't know if you want to know all the details of that but anyways so i'm like okay boom so i went to that appointment they told me that so i'm like okay same appointment they're like at the very end she's like we also saw something else um that we want to refer you to somebody else i forgot what kind of ologist that was and i'll get them to check it out so i'm like okay like what so basically there was fluid in my fallopian tubes and the fluid was causing a blockage in my fallopian tubes so basically um, nothing could get through there and fallopian tubes are what take the sperm to the egg so there was no way to for any sperm to penetrate an egg because it couldn't get through my tubes so I'm like what freaking out like I wait you know try to do things in order uh, my the order of my life and thinking you know okay now it's time to have kids and now I got all this stuff going on so I'm like you know what this is crazy so went to um the doctor they did an hsg which i forgot what that stands for but basically they shoot dye through your fallopian tubes they can watch it on the screen to see if they can see the dye come out the other side and that's how they know that something can pass through well it's not generally a painful procedure for me extremely painful like one of the most painful things i've ever been through in my life because my tubes were blocked both tubes and so when they shot the dye in there it's just pressure and it's a very sensitive area obviously so it hurt so they're like okay your tubes are blocked so then i'm like okay now didn't understand why that was the case everything i found online didn't describe anything that i had been through everything that can cause um bilateral hydrosalpines is what it's called everything that could cause that I had never experienced. So sometimes it said it's generally just unexplained. Perfect, right? Okay. So anyways, long story long, I guess. <laughs> That's how I uh, came to embark on this IVF journey. And it took me a while to formally decide on it because there were some other procedures I had to have done before to kind of prepare my body the best for the best case scenario with this to make it a higher success um, possibility. So it took me a while, but you know, it's a sensitive subject and I'm like, okay, God, if you want me to be public with this, then somebody, it, there must be somebody that's gonna benefit from it. Cause sis, like I know it's sensitive. It's a sensitive subject and people can only understand it to a certain extent because it's, it feels like it's your womanhood, right? Like how, like you do, think you did everything right. You wasn't out here you know doing too much like I don't know but hey we can't choose our own battles and we never know why God chooses us to go through the things that we go through so I'm not even complaining I'm just happy and blessed that I'm in a position that we're in a position in life that we can actually like embark on this journey it's a very expensive thing don't know why most insurance companies don't cover it the military does not cover it but that's a whole nother subject but very expensive process but you know obviously well worth it in the end but it's just like y'all i'm i've been posting my videos and me doing my injections and you know people some people have been inboxing me asking me questions like you know for advice and stuff and i'm like girl i don't know i'm doing i'm this is my true authentic self i'm like going through this real time with y'all trying to be transparent and just hoping obviously praying and hoping for the best outcome, but hoping that somebody um, will be encouraged and along the way and, you know, know that, that there's different routes to, you know, accomplish motherhood. And even though it's not something that we talk about all the time, it's nothing to be ashamed about and it's nothing that you have to even hide. I mean, it took me a while to get to this place where I, I'm more comfortable and still like some people I'm like I don't want to talk to them about this you know <laughs> I don't know why it's just I mean it's, it's 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 still even though I'm being open about it it's still like it's still something that is very touchy 
so I'm just hoping for the best outcome. I ask y'all keep me and us in, in your prayers, like seriously. And I'm I'm excited to share this with y'all. I'm, I'm excited for what's to come. So today is day nine um, in a little bit. We post in our day nine um, of 10 video. I'm supposed to have my egg retrieval next week sometime, probably Wednesday. Um, they're gonna confirm that on Monday. So this part of the process is almost over. There's still so much more to do, but I'm excited. So I just wanna thank y'all for all your support. It really means the world. You have no, no, no idea. I promise you have no idea. And it's crazy because some of the people that you think are gonna be your biggest cheerleaders, they aren't. <laughs> and then the people that you not even expecting to be like that are just, you know, showing that they care and just being real. And that's, that's 100. Like, I appreciate it. So love y'all. Thank you.